Jumping into the number five spot of the best wired gaming mice is the ExtraFi M4, coming in at a price tag of $65. But if at any point during the video you want to check out any of the five mice in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international ones. But let's jump into the ExtraFi M4. Firstly, this has the 3389 sensor, hits a 1000 hertz polling rate, up to 16,000 DPI, 400 IPS, and 50 Gs of acceleration. Overall build quality here is very good, except for a small creak on the right side where your pinky would rest. But if that's the only thing for the price point, still definitely a very good mouse. Now this is an ergo right-handed mouse. And while I know that a lot of people love this mouse shape, I never really fell in love with it during gameplay. Although there are plenty of pro gamers that use this mouse every single day. This has circular cutouts basically everywhere on it. And in hand, it feels really nice. I just personally never just fell in love with the shape. And really that's what it comes down to personal preference. You might love it. You might think it's just fine like I do, but this is totally based on your hand itself. I know for color options, they actually have quite a few. You have a teal, pink, gray with red accents, and then a white variant. So that is pretty cool. I like it when they go a little bit out there with the color options. Now the skates here are 100% PTFE, and there are four skates in each corner, which I typically don't like as much. However, the glide here is actually smooth with a tiny amount of dragging in some directions which is honestly surprising due to the placement and size of the skates. I would have expected there to be more dragging, but no, they did a pretty good job. For connection, this is obviously wired with an ultralight cable design. With this being my only real negative with this mouse, while it is wrapped in that ultralight cable, the actual cable inside of the wrapping is actually pretty stiff. And without a bungee, I found the cable to be pulling and messing up a little bit during gameplay. Is this a deal breaker? No. You can either get a mouse bungee or you can literally just tape a little bit of excess cable just to sit on your desk uh, and that works great. So definitely not a deal breaker, but some mice are really, really good with their ultralight cable. This one's just good. Now for switches, these use Omrons. While they aren't super light, they aren't super heavy. They're pretty much right there in the middle and I like them. Now for programmable buttons, there is no software included with this mouse, but you do get two extra buttons on the left side as well as a button behind the scroll wheel and obviously then the scroll wheel click itself. Now the scroll wheel here is a little mushy. It has tactile bumps, but it just doesn't feel super, super precise. And really that's probably my biggest con with this mouse. It just, it doesn't have the best scroll wheel. However, weight is pretty good at 69 grams, not the lightest in the world, but definitely not super heavy. And it has pretty cool RGB. It's nice and bright, it's vibrant, and it just adds to the look of this mouse. But with that, let's move on to the number four spot. And this is the Endgame Gear XM1R. Coming in at a price tag of $59.99, that's a good price. This uses the 3370 sensor, hits a 1000 horse pulling rate, up to 19,000 DPI, 400 IPS, and 50 Gs of acceleration. Now for the build quality here, it's very, very basic, but there's no rattles, there's no creaks, and it feels like it's built like a tank without feeling heavy. Now this has a matte finish and it attracts fingerprints like crazy if you do end up getting this colorway. Also the shape here is the most flat and low profile on the list with really no prominent palm bump. So if you are a palm gripper, uh, there's definitely better mice on the list. I was still able to do it and it worked fine, but obviously the claw grip and other grips are gonna be a little bit better for this mouse. Now for color options, you have a choice between black, dark frost, dark reflex, which is like a glossy variant, and then white. Now as expected for the skates, these are 100% PTFE. Out of the box, the Endgame Gear XM1R comes with four skates on each corner within a small skate around the sensor. This causes a horrendous amount of drag that is for me, completely unplayable. However, in the box, they include replacements for those that are one large skate on the top and one large skate on the bottom, which definitely makes this a ton better. There is still some drag in some directions, but it's very, very manageable and so much better than just in stock form. So honestly, I would recommend, you can definitely try this just out of the box, uh, but then I would just switch those off to the optional skates pretty much immediately. Now for the cable, this is an ultra light cable design and there's no pullings, no problem here. It really does feel wireless. Now for the switches, these are using KL GM 8.0 switches and that's for both the left and the right. And then it's using TTC micro switches for the side buttons. The switches are really, really light and have an extremely short throw, which is honestly really, really nice. But if you accidentally slam your mouse down hard, if you are doing hard and fast liftoffs, there can be some accidental clicking. And by that, I mean the mouse will click its own switch. I don't mean when you're slamming it down and it's so light that your finger is gonna click it. It's actually the mouse doing it itself if you're slamming it down hard enough. So for some people that could be a deal breaker depending on how you play. I personally don't play hard enough uh, for that to happen. So it wasn't an issue, but 
really, again, play style. All right, for programmable buttons, there are five total programmable buttons. The two on the left side, the middle scroll wheel click, and then the up and down scroll wheel. So really, it's not really technically a button. So really, we're looking at three programmable buttons and then two different programs for the up and down scroll. But yeah. But speaking of that, the scroll wheel is actually really good here. It's got really nice tactile bumps. It's very, very precise. Really no complaints at all with the scroll wheel. It's definitely a top tier scroll wheel. For the weight, this again comes in at 69 grams. But with that, let's move on to the number three spot, which is the Razer Basilisk V3. Coming in at a price tag of $49.70. And this moves into a gaming mouse that can be used for a lot of things. Not the best for FPS games. You can still for sure do it. But this is a fantastic mouse for slower games play styles or higher DPI players. So if you're running a thousand and above DPI, you can for sure use this for FPS games and you can totally shred. For the sensor, this uses Razer's Focus Plus optical sensor, which is fantastic for all sorts of games, including fast-paced gaming. This hits a 1000 Hertz pulling rate, up to 26,000 DPI, 650 IPS, and 50 Gs of acceleration. Now build quality here is amazing. It's definitely a larger mouse as far as gaming mice go. This is a right-handed ergonomic mouse with a thumb rest, which is so nice. If you are a palm gripper, which is going to be basically everyone that's gonna be using this mouse, it is so comfortable. It has injection molding on the sides, which feels super nice, and it just fits my hand really nicely. It's got enough grip. It just feels right. Now at this point, I've had mine for years and I haven't had any problems with reliability. It's never had any problems and the plastic itself is not breaking. I haven't had any build quality issues. The one thing is it developed a small creak, but only when you're really gripping it. Um, but that's the only thing that's happened after all these years. I had it since day one at launch. All right, for color options, you can get this in black, but you kind of have color options with the RGB because it's pretty crazy. Now for the skates, these are 100% PTFE with two small skates at the top, one around the sensor, and then one skate at the bottom. You also then have another one under the thumb rest just because of how big this mouse is. Now the interesting thing here is this glides really, really well. There's no pulling or dragging. It's overall very, very smooth. Something that you might not expect for a mouse of this size, but yeah, it actually glides really well. Not the lightest in the world, but very, very smooth, and I love that. Now for the cable, this is Razer Speedflex cable. It's what they use on all of their lightweight mouse, and it's great. It feels wireless, there's no pulling, no dragging, no problems. For the switches, these are using Razer's Gen 2 switches, which are great. They're nice and clicky, they're very tactile. One of my favorite switches of all time, the Gen 3s feel basically the same, a little bit different, um, but overall a great switch. Very satisfying, and they have a really good weight to them. There's also not too much travel, so it does feel very accurate. Now for programmable buttons here, obviously, this is really, really good. There's tons of them. There are three on the left side of the mouse, two behind the scroll wheel. Then there's obviously the left and right clicks, as well as a programmable scroll wheel that can be clicked to the left and the right side, as well as in the center and normal up and down scroll wheel. Now, this mouse is also great for slower pace sniping, especially good. This has a sniper paddle, which can also be programmed to whatever you want, but it's a paddle where you hold it and click that in. It has the ability to change that DPI to be super, super low, so you can make those really precise really, really accurate shots off if you are gonna be doing something like sniping. Now, this is one of my favorite mice to use because of this in some games. While when I'm playing stuff like COD or Battlefield, I do want a lighter weight gaming mouse. When I'm playing something like Hell Let Loose or more tactical games like Squad, Insurgency even, I've used the Basilisk a lot because if I'm getting to long range sniping, especially in something like Hell Let Loose where you might sit in one position for literally 45 minutes of real time, that sniper paddle really helps you look around quickly and then get really, really fine with those details. So in some games, this can be awesome. This is also one of the best editing mouses. That's what I've used for a lot of my editing. So yeah, it's a great all around daily mouse. Now the scroll wheel here, it feels great. It's nice and tactile. It has the ability to switch between free wheel and tactile. And like I mentioned, you can also program the left and the right click. Now this scroll wheel is better than the wireless version of this mouse. This is also far cheaper than the wireless version, but I think overall, this is kind of a nicer mouse than the wireless variant in some ways, but especially that scroll wheel, this is the best one. Now for the weight, this is not crazy heavy for what it is. 
compared to the Logitech G502, this is far lighter at only 101 grams. This is not trying to be a lightweight mouse, it's not competing there, but I think for the size of it, it's actually very well balanced and it feels a lot lighter than when you hear 101 grams. This actually feels much lighter than that. Now, the RGB, like I said, it is absolutely awesome. You have tons of RGB, almost 360 degree lighting. You have it on the scroll wheel, on the Razer logo, it just looks awesome. One of the best RGB on any mouse, maybe the best. But with that, let's move on to the number two spot, which is the BenQ Zowie S2C, coming in at a price tag of $69.99. This is an awesome mouse and one of my favorite shapes. This uses the Pixart 3360 sensor. This hits a 1000 Hertz pulling rate up to 12,000 DPI, 250 IPS and 50 Gs of acceleration. Now for build quality, while it's very basic looking, it's built incredibly solidly. There are zero creaks and rattles and I have been dailying the wireless version of this mouse, which is far more expensive, but these things are just built like Japanese cars, like. This is the Toyota of mouses. BenQ does an amazing job with their fit and finish here, and it really, really shows. It would be hard to believe that even after years of use that you would have any problems with the build quality. Really quite impressive for a lightweight mouse. Now this has a matte plastic finish that is completely smooth with no texture. However, it's still grippy due to the shape of it. I personally did not ever feel like I needed grip tape. Now let's talk skates. These are obviously PTFE. There's one large skate at the top and one large skate at the bottom, and then one small skate around the sensor. Because of this design, there was essentially zero drag caused by the skates. However, this does add more surface area, so this does feel slightly slower, more controlled than other mice on the list, but the wireless version of this is what I personally game on. That's what I've been dailying for quite a long time now, a few months, which is a long time for me, and it's awesome. So definitely, if you're like a fast-paced gamer, don't shy away from this mouse because you think that it's going to be slow. It just has a very controlled, accurate, precise feeling to it, especially those skates being ultra smooth, but not too fast. It's just a really great middle ground. For the cable, this is an ultralight cable and there's no problems here. It feels wireless if you keep a little bit of slack on it, it's great. For the switches, these are Hano switches. There's basically no travel till click, feels so, so immediate. It's light, but it's not too light. It's really just right. I think most people, when they use this mouse and the clicks, that's one of the things that really shines here. It's super immediate, no travel there, very, very accurate. It's one of the reasons I love it as a daily driver. Now for programmable buttons, there's no software here, but like the other mites on the list, you do get those extra left side buttons, those two side buttons there, which is very nice because I end up using those a lot in game. Now, the scroll wheel. This is another part where this mouse excels. The Zowie scroll wheel here is super, super satisfying. It's also in my top five best feeling scroll wheels of all time. It's definitely a top five. It's really quite good. It has great tactile bumps, not too heavy, not too light pretty much spaced perfectly between those tactile bumps. And the only real downside here is that the sound when moving the scroll wheel sounds pretty awful, but that's literally the only problem. Now for the weight, this comes in at 69 grams for the small and 72 grams for the medium. All right, now before we jump into the number one spot, we have an honorable mention, which is the Cooler Master MM711, coming in at a price tag of only $27.95. While this mouse is not the best of the best, which is why it doesn't have its own spot on this list, it is probably what I think the best of the best in terms of ultra budget. I mean, that's under 30 bucks and it's an insane mouse for that price. You guys have known that, I've recommended the heck out of this mouse. So if you like all the mice on this list, but you're like, it's a little bit out of my price point, Get this, this is what you want. This has a 3389 sensor, hits a 1000 Hertz pulling rate up to 16,000 DPI, 400 IPS and 50 Gs of acceleration. Now the design here is absolutely awesome with a really unique RGB light on the palm area and then an illuminated scroll wheel. Now the build quality feels way more expensive than it actually is. If you do press this from the sides or the bottom, there are some creaks However, for the most part while gaming, this feels honestly way more expensive than it is. It has a ton of color options. The skates are 100% PTFE with some drag, but it's very, very manageable. The ultralight cable works well. This uses Omron switches. And while these are my least favorite switch feel on the list, they're still very, very good, especially when considering that it's under 30 bucks. Obviously they can't compare to the ones on this list because these are in definitely a higher tier, but for the price, you really can't beat them. The scroll wheel is very, very nice, clear tactile bumps, pretty precise. You have six programmable buttons, and like I said, that RGB is absolutely bussin'. But with that, let's move on to the number one best wired gaming mice. This is the Razer Death Adder V3, coming in at a price tag of $69.99. This uses the Razer Focus Pro 30 
30K optical sensor up to a whopping 8,000 hertz pulling rate, and that's stock, baby. Nothing else needed. You don't, you don't need to buy anything to get 8,000 hertz. 8,000 stock, up to 30,000 DPI, 750 IPS, and 70 Gs of acceleration. Now the build quality here is really good. There's no creaks, fit and finish is great. I know a lot of people, whenever I say that about a Razer product, are always commenting like, he said that about a Razer product. Razer's been doing a great job recently. A lot of their newer stuff is really quite good. This is a right-handed Ergo mouse with a very nice, smooth, but grippy matte finish. And it is almost the largest on the list besides the Basilisk V3. And overall, it's just a large mouse. However, don't confuse this with being a slow mouse because that it is not. Now, palm grips, which is what I use, feel absolutely amazing here. You definitely feel at home. Liftoffs, a fast paced play style. The sheer comfort while managing grip during gameplay is pretty much perfect for me. It's just like the wireless Death Adder V3, which I actually dailied for quite a while, but it's a little bit lighter and it's not wireless, which means that you can get this for less than 50% of the wireless variant, but the same performance, and actually it's gonna be slightly better performance. For color options, you can get this in black, nothing else. The skates are 100% PTFE, two skates on the top, one around the sensor, and then one along the bottom. Really zero noticeable drag at all. It's a very, very smooth and even glide overall, and I really like it, no problems there. For the cable, this is Razer's Speedflex cable, so it works great. It basically feels wireless if you keep a little bit of slack on it. Now the switches here are using Razer's Gen 3 optical switches, which have a very satisfying click that are a little bit deeper than the Gen 2s and overall have a nice comfortable weight. Definitely a top tier switch that's up there. Can compete to the new Logitech G Pro X2 switches, which are insane and beat everything by a long shot. But these are definitely top tier switch, definitely top five switches of all time. Now you get seven programmable buttons with two on that left, the left and right click, the center scroll wheel, and then the up and down scroll wheel. So really we're looking at five programmable buttons, but we're gonna call it seven, that's what they call it. Now the scroll wheel here has tactile bumps, but they're a little bit more vague and lighter than I was expecting, especially coming from Razer. However, one thing that I do like with that is that the scroll wheel protrudes more, which I really enjoy for fast paced FPS gameplay. Now, while this doesn't have any RGB, the weight is definitely super nice at 59 grams. That's very, very light for the size of this mouse. And if you want to game like a champion, you can get an unbelievably good mouse for under 70 bucks. That's crazy. Again, if you want to check out any of the five gaming mice in this video, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But this is a consumer tech review, and I'll see you guys in the next video.